He works within us. We worship you. There's none like you. Your glory is excellent. And all dominion is yours. Thank you for the victory in Christ Jesus. Thank you that your kingdom is alive in us. Your word is truth. We worship you. There's none like you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Our hearts are full of your presence, of your love. We're immersed in your grace. Thank you, Lord. What is this year for us? Really? Can you turn into your Bible? During the 31st night service, we read from Isaiah chapter 60, right? And we read the whole chapter. very inspiring indeed and the message given to us there was encapsulated in the last verse can we take a look at it The last verse of Isaiah chapter 60. Have you found it? It says, A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. Did you notice? He didn't say, A little one is a thousand. He said, a little one shall become. It does spell of growth, change, right? Change. Going from one level to another. A little one shall become a thousand. That means when you are when a little one is said to be little you're talking about a thousand can you imagine that for example the bible tells us some real beautiful things um, there are many christians who who don't believe in prosperity do you know that but they seek it all the time <laughs> they seek it all the time but the bible is replete with information on the power of God, the glory of God, the honor, the majesty, the splendor 
of our Heavenly Father and His will to share what is God with His children. That's the basis of prosperity. Not because we are seeking prosperity, but because the truth is we are children of this true God. If we weren't, we shouldn't think of prosperity. The truth is we actually belong to Him. The problem between those who are the difference between those Christians who believe in it and walk in it and those who don't believe in it and criticize it is that one group believes in their true connection with God and if he's real you don't need to seek prosperity it just works in you now the other guy doesn't understand that he thinks you're seeking it and you're trying to get it and so because he's been seeking it and trying to get it and couldn't get it so he criticizes it but there's no human being who doesn't want to prosper there's none they all go to work they all want to work they all seek to improve themselves they all want to take care of their families and loved ones they all want to help other people every human person wants to be able to do something not only for himself but for other people that's prosperity every human being that's not sick in the head wants to do that but when they try and it doesn't work then they think if it's working for anybody else that person must be doing something different something wrong because I'm good and it's not working for me can you see it so that's a problem and so they've got to try to pull you back to where they're at but if you understand the scripture for example when I read the Bible it's difficult for me to think differently I find it difficult to accept something that's different from what's in the book it's difficult for me to to not accept divine health because the book says so in so many places and so many ways I'll have to be blind and stupid to not accept it if I didn't read the Bible maybe I would accept what others say about it but because I've read it and I keep reading it I find it difficult to not accept what it says and so I can't listen to someone who claims to have read the Bible because I'm reading it too I can accept it just because you said you read it I wasn't there when you read it I don't know that you read it you claim to read it but if, the, if it's not working in your life I can accept that you read it doesn't matter how many degrees you got on the Bible you understand that anybody can say he's read the Bible that doesn't mean he's done it that doesn't mean he even understood it what I want to see is is his life producing what it talks about because I'm reading the Bible too and I find it hard to not accept it so just because somebody is religious and he says he you know he looks like he knows it and then he says you know the Bible doesn't say this or the Bible says this you know a lot of people just listen to somebody else they don't know whether or not it's true that's why 
in this ministry, we make the effort to show you the scriptures. We make the effort to guide you through the scriptures, not just claim the Bible says. And we want you to read it for yourself. We want you to see it for yourself and understand it for yourself. So you can make your own conclusions. I want to show you something in the Bible. Let's just look at this. You know, back in those days, they used silver and gold, all right, as um, legal tender. And um, even today, money is still measured in gold, all right? Even though we use different currencies, but it's all, it's all referenced to gold. But I want you turn to turn to first kings in chapter number 10 you remember the man called solomon do you remember him there was something that god said this was the 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 young man who prayed one day and god said to him what do you want me to do for you and he said give me wisdom and understanding all right if you read from some translations it would say wisdom and knowledge but um, the real uh, word was understanding he asked for wisdom and understanding and so he could lead the people he had just become king and God said you asked for the right thing and because of that I'm gonna make you so wise no one can compare with you I'll give you wisdom then God said I'm gonna make you rich you didn't ask for riches but I'm gonna make you rich and richer than anybody else he said I'll make you rich God said so to this young man and then he said I'll also I'll also subdue your enemies and so Solomon was was a great king God made him great now let's see what happened here this part of the book is about um, how successful he was and, and some of the things that happened with him because of what God did for him. All right, First Kings in chapter number 10, I want us to begin with verse 23. This is, it's a result of what God said to the man. You ready? Okay, verse 23, First Kings chapter 10. Can you all read it for me? Want to go. Did you see that? Because God blessed him. It was God who blessed him. It wasn't the devil. So the Bible says King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Because God made him wise. Look at verse 24. And all the earth sought to Solomon everybody wanted to hear all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart and they brought every man his present vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices horses and mirrors a rate year by year every year can you imagine that This guy became so rich. Everybody wanted to hear words of wisdom from Solomon. And the Bible says it came from so many different nations just to hear what he had to say. Think about that. That's wonderful, isn't it? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. God said so. God said so and it happened so he said so and it happened now wonderful let's look at verse verse 27 I want you to read verse 27 want to go
Did you see that? 